Okay, now, hello, people. Uh, back to the congregation. Uh, so we are starting back with Gideon and uh, what's going on and what state uh, Israel was in, which is a state of panic, disarray, uh, being cursed by the Lord or the Lord taking his hand up off, off of them because they doing stuff they're not supposed to do, like worshiping idol gods, you know, uh, gods that can neither hear, speak, think. You're greater than what you're worshiping. Wood, silver, gold, paper. None of those things can do what you can do as a human. So, uh, you worship in something that you're greater than when you should be worshiping God, which no man is greater than, you know. Uh, so, where I left off was that Israel was being terrorized every time that they tried to plant food, uh, grow crop. So their people, their children, their women, the men, kings, and all of that could eat. Uh, you had people from, you know, the east, west, uh, all that coming up on them uh, from all over the place. Uh, Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel. So, uh, and they would just camp out and then uh, in the land, and they would just destroy all of their crop every time that they tried, man. And as far as from where they were to uh, for the, where the Israelites were to Gaza, I'm sure it's a lot of far territory. Uh, and that's why it's important. We have to follow the Lord. Like I said, uh, we all are blessed and cursed with our perfections, imperfections, right? Blessed with our perfections, cursed with our imperfections, but we're still loved, and, and that's just the process. And uh, but we cannot never worship no other gods. We cannot turn away from God. You know what I mean? In Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I just felt like giving a shout out to M1 man. Uh, I just watch all their little mixtapes and stuff, and uh, those guys helped my game a lot. Uh, gave me a lot of flavor and sauce to my game, you know, and uh, all the kids around the world. So I just wanted to give a shout out to them for doing a great job uh, promoting positive positivity in basketball, you know what I'm saying? And shout out to all of those great men who made this happen, you know, that hand one stuff. It, was, it, it, it's, it, it has been and it will continue to be a great movement. I'm sure a lot of uh, people my age can relate to that. Uh, so, back to it. Uh, they left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, oxen, and donkeys. These enemy hordes, coming with their cattle in tents as thick as locusts, arrive, and you know how locusts come. They come and just devour the entire land, you know what I mean? Consumption, just ridiculous on their level of how they do it. So, they coming. These enemies are coming at Israel like this, with lo like locusts. Arrive on droves on camels, too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Mennonites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. So it was not until the people of Israel were in such a dire state that they were like, oh, we're starving to death. We're about to die off, Lord. Uh, we, we need your help, please. We have to. We were stubborn as heck, but uh, and we've been stubborn as heck. But now it's time for us to call out to you because we have absolutely no choice. And that's where God answers their prayers, even though they've been disobedient disobedient children this entire time and for these seven years still hadn't came and came to the Lord in seven years of this horrible treatment you know and that's why I say with this 400 years plus of, of the uh, enslavement of black people all over the world as well you know not just in America um, we were shipped all over the world you know, uh, and, and made to be slaves and less than human, 
you know. Um, so, uh, and we got the curse of the Deuteronomy. The Deuteronomy curse is on, and it's clearly has only been on black people, period. We the only people that got shipped all over the whole entire world. Uh, we spread throughout the entire world, which fulfilled the, the Abraham, you know, uh, your, your inheritance will be uh, too numerous to count. It's all over the world. We scattered all over the place. You know, I go to the gym. I'm wearing a Puerto Rican, uh, Puerto Rico jersey, right? You know, just repping. Much love, Puerto Rico. Uh, and the dude see me in the gym, and he an older gentleman, and he starts speaking Spanish to me. And uh, I say, hey, man, I, I don't understand. He said, he said Puerto Rico. He said, I'm from Puerto Rico. You know what I'm saying? And you know what that means? And my son was very amazed at that. And you know what that means? That means he couldn't distinguish whether, you know, I'm from his lineage, his bloodline or not. He don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because we are one now. You get me? That made me feel good, bro. Like, for real, you know? That made me feel good that I could connect with another black man from a whole nother culture and uh, country and everything, you know what I'm saying? That made me feel great, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that was cool, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. Uh, so, yeah, man, hey, so Onslaught I was on, I was on Israel, super bad. That's where Gideon comes into play. So, here we go, man. They finally say, hey, we starving to death. Lord, can you please come help us? We need your help. And guess what happens? Does the Lord say, F off? He say, I'm going to go send you somebody to save you now. Now that you done called out children and doing, you feel your, your heart is, is, is turned and you're broken, he done broke God, breaks mother. He breaks, he broke them. He broke them to mold them. Like, you're going to either die or you're going to get down with me again. You know. And hey, are we choosing to die as black people? Because it's real easy to be blessed. Now, what I want to make the point and emphasis of all of these locusts, uh, so the uh, the camel, that were, you know, they were coming on camels and uh, they was taking all the sheep and the donkey and the donkeys and the oxen and the enemy hordes uh, and the cattle tents and they were and they were as thick as locusts um, arriving on camels too numerous to count now in equivalent to this this would be tanks and uh, all kind of military action and military missiles and all these kind of crazy things coming against uh, 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 the people of Israel and uh, the thing the point is is that God was protecting them when they were not uh, when they were following God and they were following the, 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 the God Almighty, the one who showed up in Israel, saved them, led them out, all these things, uh, apparently, you know, showed up in Egypt and, and led them out, you know, through Moses and all those things. That thing, that stuff, that, by them remembering those things and, uh, and you know, following the Lord's principles and God's and guidelines and all those rules, whatever it is, you have to love and for him to love and protect them and guide them, they chose to get away from that. When they chose to get away from that, then they were cursed. You understand? But before that, they were protected from all these big time, huge uh, armies and all these uh, locusts of armies. And you know what I mean? And uh, camp, you know they riding up on camels and jeeps. And you know I'm just giving you equivalent to now. All that they they break rolling up on them bad. You know and and, and killing shit. They doing it all, man. This this is uh, uh, this is a nice way to say it, bro. They was these enemies were killing the shit out of Israelites, bro, and they were starving them, bro. And they and these Israelites because they didn't follow God could not fight back. Whereas normally there would be no fight because God would kick the shit out of everybody that mess with His children and those who follow Him. When they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, 
this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. So he starts by bringing messengers immediately once the people call out and say, hey, Lord, please save us. Please help us. God immediately brings a prophet for either warning, correction, guidance, future events, whatever you need. So here we go. So he said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt and rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the oak tree at Ophir, which belonged to Josh, Joshes of the clan of Ebenezer, of Ebazi. Gideon, son of Joash, had been threshing wheat at the bottom of the winepress to hide the grain from the Medanites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. So, you already see Gideon's heart is in the right place already. He already is fighting the battle to make sure that his people don't starve. God sees that little gesture in Gideon, and, and he's like, hey, I see that. I see that little gesture that you just, you know, you, you, part of the, you say, I ain't letting my people starve. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't care what nobody's talking about. I ain't letting my people starve. So, God sees that in him, and you know, he called, he said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. That's what God said to Gideon. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handled, handed us over to the Midianites? Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Now, I'm pretty sure that Gideon is like, Man, who the heck have you got? And it's crazy, right? But humans are so arrogant, right? Who the heck is God talking to? Because like, ain't no way. I, me, what? Who? Gideon, what? Me? How? What? But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Mennonites as if you were fighting against one man. Ooh. <laughs> Man, it's just telling you, man, say, man, a man of God with God on his side can go against a billion people, bro, and it'd be like one man to that man. Man, y'all better not mess with the Lord Almighty's anointed ones, man. Ooh, hey. Gideon replied, if you were truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you. Now, I want y'all to understand that this judge, prophet of the Lord that has been spoke, that has been chosen by God, is getting a personal encounter. Somehow he's being spoken to, whether it be dreams, whether it be uh, audible uh, information, audible voice, uh, the Holy Spirit talking to him, coming down upon him. Gideon is, is having an extensive conversation with God as if he's right there in the room, like as if he's right there in the room with him. That's how he's talking to God. So that's pretty interesting. Now I'm about to stop this video and then I'm going to start the next one.